Hey guys, it's Game Chief. Um, as you guys may or may not know, recently the Daisy Dev team has released the Daisy server files. This means that you can go ahead and create your own servers now on your own computer on a dedicated machine, and it also opens up the opportunity to edit mission files and start doing a bit of modding. So today we're going to go ahead and start and show you how to do a basic setup for a Daisy server. This guide is going to be oriented more for people with a dedicated server, so it's not meant to be ran on the same machine that you're going to be playing it. I'm going to assume you know how to port forward and that you've already port forwarded port 2302, which is the basic port for Daisy, along with uh, port 27016, um, because you do need those in order to show up in the servers list. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So here we are, we're on our machine that we want to go ahead and set the server up on. I'm going to be using Windows Server 2012 R2. You can really use any Windows operating system. I don't believe the Linux files are out just yet, um, but I did hear that if you use Wine, you can do that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and open up Steam. Once that loads up over here. And then we're gonna go to your library, go to your tools, and then you're gonna wanna look for Daisy server. So Daisy server right here. Now note, you do have to be logged into a Steam account that owns Daisy right now. You cannot do it without logging in. Uh, you also cannot use Steam CMD at this moment. So we're gonna go ahead and hit install. Go through the prompts. I'm just gonna take a moment. And Steam's now downloading the server files. So if we scroll up, you can see it's only 720 megabytes. Not a big deal. It'll be done in just a moment. All right, now that that's done downloading, we're going to go and go back to tools, right click on Daisy server, go to properties, local files, browse local files, and that's going to bring up our Daisy server install. So we're going to go and close out of these Steam tabs. And then we have a couple things that is important to look at. So we have our server Daisy configuration. Um, this file is going to have all the important configurations such as password, server name, all that stuff. And also we're going to need to create a file to actually launch it because you can't just double click this uh, exe and get started. So if we open up the config file and let me just change the language to address so it's a bit easier to read. You can see that they have the very basics already set up for us. Um, However, I've already modified this a bit, and I'm just going to go ahead and open that. So if we go to Daisy stuff over here, and I'll have links to paste bins of this in the description. So here is my version of it, and we're just going to go ahead and copy everything and paste it in to our configuration file. So there's a couple important things. Obviously, you have your host name, so whatever you want your actual server to be called on the server list, a password if you want people to join, um, an admin password to log in as admin, don't give that out obviously, um, a log file so you can rename your log. Um, I always do mine server console, it's just easier to find it. Max ping, I have mine set to 500 for now. Uh, timestamps, I prefer to have mine as full, I don't really like the short timestamps in the RPT log. Um, just a couple of logging things every minute. Uh, you know, Everything has a little description off to the right. Uh, message of the day. Uh, max players, other settings you probably don't really need to change. Again, it's all to the right. And that's about it. Everything is commented explaining what it does and how you can change it or why you might want to change it. Um, so just read these comments, explore a bit, and you'll figure it out. Next, we're going to need a bat file in order to start the server. So I already made one again in the description. I'm going to go ahead and paste that over here. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it. So it just starts the Daisy server. Um, now here's an important note: is that instance ID one is the ID that I have in the configuration right here. So this is for if you have more than one Daisy server running, they all have to have unique IDs. So make sure you keep that in mind. Uh, the config is that one I just showed you: server Daisy.cfg. The profile I have set is server name, so what's going to happen is when the server starts, it's going to create a folder in the root directory of your Daisy folder, and um, you'll whatever you want to name this. Really, it's just going to store your um, logs along with your um, battle life folder, so your bands and stuff like that. 
The port, which I've left as 2.3.0.2, that's the default port. No need to change that unless you're running multiple servers, really. Again, make sure this port is forwarded along port 27016. Again, um, this is a dedicated host, so I don't have to worry about that, but you want to make sure you keep that in mind. And for the CPU count, I have that as 8 because that's the amount of cores that are available. Change that to how many ever cores you have in your system, probably to um, no file patching. You'll want that enabled. Do logs. You'll want that enabled as it actually allows these to work. Um, these top ones up here, the logging memory and all that stuff, they won't work without that. Admin log, you want that in freeze check. We'll check your server every five minutes to see if it's crashed. If it crashes, it'll create a dump file. And then we're going to go ahead and double click this fat file. It's going to go ahead and start the server. As you can see, it created this server name folder because I didn't change it. And if we click over here, we'll wait for the server to launch. And when the server launches, a BattleEye folder is going to be created with the DLL for BattleEye. You're also going to want to create a BE server underscore x64 CFG, which I've already done, again, in the description. And if we right click and edit, we can just check you have your Archon password, and then you want some password that other people can't guess. That way you can kick and ban people with an Archon utility such as Dart or EPM. And then we see that our server is loading up. And this will take a couple minutes. There are some errors. Um, thanks, Bohemia. Um, and that will take a couple minutes to load up. And while we're waiting for our server to load up, we're going to go ahead and open up Daisy. Now, it's important to note to make sure that you have Daisy on the experimental branch. If you don't know how to do that, you just go to properties, betas, and double check that experimental is selected. That way, you will be able to join your server. So we're going to go ahead and hit play. And we'll wait for this to open. Once your game is loaded, we're going to go ahead and join the server. So we're going to hit change server, go to the community tab, and you can type your server name in. So if I think I believe, if I just type Dankin, yeah, Dank test server will come up. Or you can use IP address and the port 2302. Search that, and that's not what shows up. And then enter the server password, which was 123. Hit connect. It's going to go ahead and start loading us in. Alrighty, and I'm in game on my server. And that's really about it. I'm just gonna go ahead and exit. And that's about it. That's how you create your own Daisy server um, with the recent server files that have been released. Um, since this has been released so recently, I'm sure there's gonna be some changes. Um, if there's any major changes, I'll try to put it in the comments and then pin it. Um, but other than that, that should be about it. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, anything, feel free to drop those in the comments. Other than that, have a great day.